Hi, I'm Julio, you know me. And today I'm gonna tell you a story that's a little bit messy. I'm a little nervous about this one. So, I was at Ottawa for a co-op job, and I met a guy, we hit it off, started a nice little relationship, let's call him Jeremy. And Jeremy would tell me about his office Christmas party that was always a blast. And he would tell about it and how he never brought a date to it because he had been closeted at work for so long, but he had just started to come out a few years back, so now he's thinking, you know. Uh, but he never actually invited me. <laughs> and I think he was nervous. And it's understandable. Like, this is a guy with uh, kind of like a grunting attitude at work. So if someone very masculine comes out quietly, it's not that much of a fuss, but it's completely different if he just brings someone to the office party for the first time. And, you know, he, he was worried that people would start treating him differently. And so just to expand a little bit on that, uh, there are three main ways that I've seen workplace harassment. First is outright bigotry. This is the your abomination types. And that's kind of rare nowadays, thank goodness. Uh, but it can be really, really damaging. The second one is unintentional harm. I met a woman at a conference and she's been working in physics for years now. She walked into the machine shop and they had this huge wall full of pinups because there were like two women in the entire company. It was her, the one physicist, and a secretary. And she walks into the, the place to ask for some parts and at some point a technician comes to her and says, hey, when you come into the machine shop, it makes us uncomfortable because of the, the pinup wall. How do you think she felt? <laughs> you know, <laughs> walking into a place and there's a wall of naked women. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, it's always, an evolving world and because of that there are always going to be frictions here and there that aren't meant to be hurtful they're just there and that's the kind of thing that when you bring it up to people when you assume the best then you work it out and that's something that Jeremy is very much not worried about because he's been in the company for so long he has those good connections with people all over the place so he has enough respect that uh, things would be fine the third one is ambition looking for an excuse so think uh, people fighting for the board member position. It's when ambition is everywhere uh, and that's fine, competition is everywhere and that's good, productive in certain ways, but when you're just trying to find something to win over someone else and that someone else is a minority, some people will use that against them. It's someone just trying to put you down based on your identity so they can climb over you. And this is what Jeremy is worried about because now he's trying to compete for the like, higher positions in the company. And so that's when things beyond just your work skills come into play because everyone is on the same really high level of performance. Uh, so that's the mood coming in to this situation. And that's why I was very nervous for him as well. Like I was kind of relieved. Oh, okay, he didn't invite me, so I couldn't possibly ruin his career. And so, you know, I'm curled up with a blanket, I'm hugging a pillow, I'm about to watch some TV, and he texts me. And it was, hey, Christmas party's happening, dot, dot, dot. Next text, you can come, dot, dot, dot. Is that an invitation to you? I don't think it is. I don't think it says, hey, I want you to go, hey, be my date, no. You can come, as if it's nothing, as if he wasn't talking about it for weeks and still like mulling over whether or not he would invite me. But I'm thrilled, I'm so excited to go. Oh my goodness, he trusts me that much, that is amazing. And also, I'm so proud of him. This is a process for him, to, to be himself at work is very recent. And queer people being out at work is recent. That's something that always kind of like catches me by surprise. Anyhow, so, I get ready, I put on the nicest clothes that I have in Ottawa. <laughs> I put on some tasteful eyeliner, little suspenders, little bow tie, and uh, off till walking half an hour in five feet of snow, because Ottawa is small enough that I don't have to spend money on a bus pass. Uh, so I get there. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I really recommend Ray Montague interviews. Uh, she 
was a black woman working for the Marines, designing ships. And she was the first person to ever design a ship in CAD software, which is like the computer programs for designing mechanical things. So like, yes, she's so cool. Uh, yeah, she's really awesome. Link down below. So I get to the place and this overwhelming feeling hits me that I'm underdressed. It's this beautiful venue with a view to snow falling in the Ottawa downtown. It's this amazing place. And it's a room full of very successful engineers who have built an, a phenomenal career for themselves. And I'm here to look gay and ruin my partner's career. And ah, so I'm walking around and my eyes are itching because I can't stop focusing on how I'm the only guy in this place with eyeliner and my bow tie is grabbing at my throat because who the heck wears a patterned bow tie? It's a little too much. And everyone is just like, it's not just the, the dressed up, it's the like fancy toned down dressed up. And they're just like, what am I doing here? And if I'm just like by the coat check because there are like some people just like serving food and things and I'm just like, cool, I can just blend in with them. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> no one important will notice me. Uh, and then eventually Jeremy finds me there and uh, I just feel at home, like it's fine, he's here. And I wanna hug him so bad. And then it hits me again. His invitation of you can come dot, dot, dot doesn't exactly specify what I'm here as. So am I his plus one? Am I his date? Am I his fun friend? I don't know. Am I a family cousin? I don't, because he also doesn't know. He hasn't decided whether or not he's like coming out in full blast or just having me there as a quiet defiance. So I can't know either and I can't decide because I would be deciding for him. So I'm just Jeremy's plus one. The whole night, people are like, oh, where do you work? Oh, I don't work here. I'm Jeremy's plus one. Oh, cool, how do you know each other? Friends in common. <laughs> uh, awkward pauses. Anyhow, 10 minutes into the party and we run into Jeremy's friend. And I look at her without knowing who she was and just mouth, because her dress was amazing. And she looks back, she knows who I am, because she sees me with him, and just turns and says, oh, look at those suspenders, they're so cute. This is what we need up in here. Oh, look at that eyeliner. And you know, we're going in this validating back and forth. And I'm like, my voice pitch is going higher and higher. And at some point we're like squealing in the whole room. I love doing that. And after that, like Jeremy and her boyfriend are just waiting on the side, like, hi, shaking hands. Like, did you see the game? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> and we're like, ah, no, and after that, my attention is gone. Because you, you can't beat that <laughs> in terms of a level of visible gayness. So uh, I'm good. I feel welcome. I feel like uh, they want me here. And at least she does. And later I found out she was actually the one who pushed Jeremy a little bit to invite me. Like they, he decided he wasn't going to. And she just asked him like, hey, what about that guy that you've been gushing about? You know, why not bring him in? So, I owe her a lot. I think that was, was really good allyship on her part of um, not pushing, uh, not forcing anyone out, but just you know saying, hey, I'll, I'll be there if you need it. And then being there when he needed it. So we had the dance floor. Uh, he's still not ready to dance with me. So we go as a group and I spin around. I dance with a lot of different people. At some point I danced with the head of HR apparently. And I was just wondering if I could use them to get a job. But we, we inch closer. He gets more and more comfortable. People, no one's staring, everyone's fine. Uh, eventually, one of his favorite songs, it's a Leonard Cohen song, starts playing, and we start slow dancing together, and it was so sweet. Eventually, the CEO pulls out a bass and goes on stage with a live band, and they just play, and just, all right, you have time for this, good for you, Mr. CEO. Uh, after that's done, he gets off stage, and first thing he does is like, come straight to intercept us uh, to shake his hand, and say hello, and shake my hand. And to Jeremy, that was huge. It's such a small gesture, but to him it was very much like, hey, we appreciate you. That's amazing. Uh, he, was, he was so grateful for that. And I, I am too. I really am. Next day, Jeremy tells me that the water cooler talk was in his uh, mysterious new lover, uh, which I'm really grateful for just because, hey, I didn't ruin his career, hooray. Uh, but also, if anything went wrong, if anyone eventually tried to bring up, hey, Jeremy brought a, a younger guy as a date, isn't that wrong? Maybe he's not a very good free job. Uh, they'd be like, not cool. I danced with him and he called me a goddess. So 
don't, you know, don't you dish on Jeremy's boyfriend. <laughs> so that was, I don't know, I was really, I'm really glad I did it. <laughs> no major disasters. I guess I'm telling you this story because I was nervous. I still am nervous about this kind of stuff. I mean, my mom still goes on rants about how I'm never gonna get a job because there's one photo of me in drag on Facebook. And it's, it, it may be true in some contexts. I mean, I'm also coming from Brazil where we have a lot of stabbings of people that are just on the street with a partner. So it's not exactly a um, um, pleasant background, but it's a changing world. And for it to change, we need a trust in it. And it's, it's scary, it can be scary. And by all means, you don't have to bring all of yourself to work. You don't have to come out of your closets or whatever else. But when you're there and you are you at work, it makes things better. Because there is so much less fear and so much less buzzing weirdness going around, so much less ego or uh, 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 defensiveness. It makes me a better engineer to be out as an engineer. And that means I'm gonna have to be braver and it means I'm gonna have to trust the people around me and it means I'm gonna have to be able to deal gracefully with mismatches. But you know what, that's fine. That's not so hard, I can do that. I think anyone can. Um, this is a story I think of being brave uh, I, Jeremy was the one being brave, not me. It wasn't my job on the line. But it's also a story about how the people in his life and at his work um, um, s dissolved the tension so well. Uh, I think that's why, that's why it's important to be told. Going into a STEM career, uh, a lot of us hear the horror stories and we're kind of worried about these things. And so I think that's why I'm bringing up um, the, the, the very bad examples, <laughs> but also the very good examples, because it's a reality, uh, and we're gonna have to be able to face it, but you know what? We can, and we will. I guess I'm telling you this story because it took bravery for Jeremy to be himself at work. Uh, I mean, I guess I was scared as well, but it wasn't my job on the line. It was in my workplace uh, environment that was on the line. So he was the one being brave here. Uh, the truth is, we're gonna have to be brave. Uh, we're gonna have to have those interactions. We're gonna have mismatches at work and we're gonna need to be here to make it work. Uh, do I have the solutions? Absolutely not. But when we talk to each other about it, we learn more, we get better at doing it and we get better at not harming someone else. We, we understand better how to not make it toxic for other people by accident or on purpose. And so this is why I wanted to tell you this convoluted, messy, funny story. Because uh, you know what? We pick STEM careers for a billion reasons. And when we do them, those same reasons are what makes us stay. And we need to be prepared to stay, uh, no matter how hard. That's what I learned from it. Uh, it takes bravery to be at work, to be yourself at work, uh, but that's what it takes to be fully there. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Uh, this is a bit of a long and personal story, but I really appreciate it and I hope, I hope it makes you feel a little less worried about what things are gonna be like 